Welcome back to the ICRS, and we have another great guest for you. And he said, I hadn't sold millions, but he will. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm predicting and prophesying and, and speaking life into his sales form. <laughs> Mr. David Hazelton, how are you doing, David? Oh, thank you, David. It's, it's a not, being not hard forgetting his name. We got the same. <laughs> Same names. And you wrote the book, Simplified Guide, Paul's Letters to the Churches. Before we jump into that, let's give a little history about you. Sure. Um, I'm both, let me tell you professionally, and then let me tell you the background uh, that led to writing the book. Professionally, I'm a lawyer. I'm okay. a senior partner in a big old law firm. It's one of the five largest law firms in the country. And um, clients come to me with sort of difficult issues, complex okay. litigation. My job is to simplify it. My job is to master facts and law Put, put it in the simple terms that a judge can decide okay. to rule on. Um, and I'm also a Sunday school teacher. For the last 35 years, I've taught Sunday school and led home Bible study groups, often three or four times a week. And in that time, one of my passions has been seeing people put the gospel into practice. And that's what this is, mm. book is kind okay. of about. So that's the big picture history. All right, all right. And so you're using, you're using your, your experiences and you put a book together. Yeah, the, you say the, the mind of a lawyer and the heart of a Sunday school teacher. <laughs> that's, that's a good way to put it, the mind of a lawyer, the heart of a Sunday school teacher. And you, and you pick Paul's letter to the churches. Tell me why. Well, first, I don't think people realize how important Paul's writings are in the New Testament. You know, of the 27 books in the New Testament, 13 are written by the Apostle Paul. Wow. And in this book, we're looking at those nine letters, Romans, 1st and 2nd Corinthians, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, 1st and 2nd Thessalonians. And we're looking at all nine of those letters and see what he has to say about living a gospel-centered life. And it's a comprehensive survey. David, what we've tried to do in the book is take a topic, for example, marriage, and take everything he says in his nine letters to the churches on marriage and on family relationships and then put them in all in one place. Um, and so there's a chapter on family relationships. We take all that he has to say in all of those nine letters on the issue of suffering and the ups and downs of life. We take it and we put it all in one place, called the chapter called The Ups and Downs okay. of Life. And we're trying to, my passion is to put the gospel into practice and to see that Christ is at the center of all this. I mean, we, the first section of the book is called Right Beliefs and what he says about what we believe as Christians. And what do we believe? We believe that Christ died for our sins. Amen. He was buried Amen. and rose again. And the second part is called Right Conduct. And how do we live that holy life to which we're called? It's because Christ lives in you mm -hmm. that you can live that holy life. And then we, third part of the book is on right relationships. And how do we have those healthy, good relationships as God intended? Well, we display the character of Christ that we have because Christ lives in us, because Christ has saved us. Amen. So it's, you know, it's really it, operationally, practically speaking, what does it mean to live the gospel-centered, the Christ-centered life? And that's what Paul was all about, and that's what the book is all about, David. Amen. And so when you've, you've gone through the gospel, I'm sure you've heard this question, yeah. is the gospel debatable? Well, it, it, and it isn't. And why isn't it? Because it's not something that man made up. You know, it isn't something that a bunch of theologians got together and said, let's take a vote on how we get saved. It's instead revealed by God directly to Paul. He talks about it. He says, this, is, this gospel I preach is not something that man made up. It's nothing that was handed to me by anyone other than Christ. And I received it by him from revel, through revelation from him. And to understand that the gospel is God's gospel, not man's gospel. Dave, Dave think about it. If you were to make up a gospel story, you'd probably make up a story where somebody comes along and pulls himself up by the bootstraps and does it on their own. <laughs> yeah, true and, inspirational story. <laughs> and, and, but instead... The gospel message is you and I are sinners who need to be saved. Mm. Or maybe we talk about a superhero who comes and rescues the day. Well, our superhero died on the cross for our sins. This is not the stuff that man makes up. This is the stuff of God revealed, and it resonates in our heart with that truth that I can't do it on my own. It's only through Christ that I can be saved. It's only through Christ that I can live the holy life intended. It's only through Christ that I can have healthy relationships yeah. as God intended. Mm, that, that's amazing. That's amazing. So, when people have, how many people have read the book? I mean, as far as you gave it out to people that you oh, sure. thought well, of, well, in a very, very idea. real sense, um, it's been test proven for the last thirty years. So, as I mentioned, I'm a Sunday school teacher, sure. and I've been teaching on Paul's letters to the churches. In fact, it was back when I was in college, and I'm not sure I'll tell you how long ago that was. But <laughs> it was a long time ago. When I and you know, when God laid on my heart this this message, and so I began to see the pattern that appears in Paul's letters. 
So how many people? There's been dozens and dozens of Sunday school classes, dozens and dozens of Bible study groups that have used this. And we've now had the opportunity to see other people use it. This book is intended to be for for small groups, for Sunday school, but also for individual use. Mm -hmm. So you can read it and actually then come back to it later. If you ever have a question, you go, you know, what did Paul say on sexual purity? And why is it important to be pure sexually? Yeah. You come back to it, you can look and see that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit and understand the importance of purity in our lives. Mm. So as a lawyer and, and as yeah. a Bible, as a Sunday school teacher, is yeah. freedom, is freedom in, in Christ an excuse for sin? <laughs> and if, you, if that's what people think, they've not understood the life Amen. transforming nature of the gospel. Amen. You know, there's freedom and flexibility on a lot of issues. I mean, Christians have different views on are some days more holy than others. You know, I come from a Baptist background where we didn't have special days like Lent or other seasons of the year. But, you know, others honor special days. And that's okay. We have freedom on secondary issues. But on central issues of what the gospel is, the central issues of living a holy life that's consistent with God's command, we don't have freedom to ignore that. Mm, yeah. that's, that's amazing. Now, what was the hardest thing about putting this book together? There's some things you had to leave out, some things you just... Um, so, it's inter- you know, I, I have my, my study Bible at home, mm-hmm. um, which is big print, again, testimony to my age. But, you know, Paul's letters total about 120 pages in length. The book is just about 200 pages in length. Yeah. So the answer is I've not I've tried not to leave out anything. One of the goals here is to be comprehensive and have everything he says on topics. Now, in some instances, we refer to the passage rather than quoting it at length. Yeah. But the effort here, David, has been to be thorough, to be comprehensive, and most importantly, be practical. To put this in terms that the reader can understand, the small group can use. Each of these chapters are eight to 12 pages long. Yeah then have discussion questions or reflection questions at the end of it. So it's, it's intended to be a very practical study of Paul's letters. Amen. This sounds like a very good book. Uh, tell everybody how they can get your book. Well, it's available on Amazon, of course, and Barnes & Noble. It, we also have a website, thesimplifiedguide.com, where you can order copies as well. Um, and I, it would make my joy complete to see lives transformed as people understand better the gospel message and how it applies to the way we think, believe, how we behave, and how we build healthy relationships as God intended. Amen. Simplifiedguide.com. Yes. Thank you so much for being God on bless my you, show. David. I hope that was what you expected <laughs> as far as the interview. But, you know, we'll be right back with another great guest. Thank you again.